Hello, everyone. Welcome to Technologies Discussion Channel. Today, I'd like to continue the discussion on EMC consideration. Okay, so for this video, I'm going to share how can we actually distinguish between capacitive, okay, which is e view, and also inductive, which is H-field coupling. In short, we need to know what kind of noise source. For example, if the noise source is from capacitive, okay, on the part 12 and 13 series discussion, I will discuss how can we actually resolve the capacitive coupling noise. Well, maybe if the noise source is from inductive, then we probably need to so-called use another techniques to resolve this issue. Hence, this is very important to determine whether your noise source is from capacitive or inductive noise. So therefore, after you can actually adopt the different solution in order to solve this issue. So hence, this video, I'm going to share with you how can we actually distinguish between capacitive or inductive coupling. This will be the part 11 series discussion on EMC. So guys, if you're keen to know more about EMC, okay, please take a look on the playlist under the description. Over there, you will be able to find a series of discussion on EMC. This is my email. If you have any question regards on this discussion, okay, please drop me an email. Okay, or if not, if you want to have a faster response, you are always welcome to ask me your question through the comment. Before I continue, okay, I'd like to urge you guys to help this channel by pressing the like button. When more of you guys actually have to press the like button, this video will have a better chances to reach out to a larger audience. So guys, give me a few seconds. Help me press the like button now. For those who are new to this channel, please consider to subscribe and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. As I mentioned earlier on, it is always very important okay, to be able to distinguish the noise source whether is it from the E-view or the H-view coupling. This is because based on the different coupling, we need to adopt different solutions in order to solve this issue. So hence, we need to determine okay, whether the noise is it from E or from H-view coupling. Okay, so therefore, before we actually identify whether noise is from an E or a magnetic field involved, we need to understand the characteristics of each type of field and using appropriate management techniques. So there are a few steps and methods so as to distinguish the key difference between these two. First one, okay, we need to understand the nature of electric and magnetic field. Okay, so as for the electric field noise, okay, so typically this is actually caused by a voltage difference okay, from high impedance source, often okay, manifest as capacitive coupling and influenced by nearby conductor or insulator. So in this diagram here, you can see that this is actually a PCB. So when we are going to have electric field noise, basically when there is a potential difference, okay, for example, we have a higher potential difference okay, on this conductor, and then we have a lower potential on the ground. So you can see from here, there is a potential difference. So therefore, you can see that electric field actually generate. So basically, this unintentional generate basically cause this electric field noise. So in short, electric field is typically from a voltage different. Typically from a higher voltage, they actually couple to a lower voltage and hence you have this electric field noise. As for magnetic field noise, this is usually caused by current flow. Okay, so for example, this is a conductor and there is a current flow and therefore we actually generate by low impedance source Okay, so it is often manifest as inductive coupling and hence is influenced by nearby loop or coil. So basically when a current flow, so I have discussed earlier on, you actually generate a magnetic field in blue. As you can see from here, they circle around the conductor. So basically this is how the noise source come about. Whether is it E field, whether is it magnetic field, we need to distinguish. Then we actually can adopt different solution to curb this. How can we actually identify? Okay, so it may be very useful okay, to note some difference between inductive and also capacitive coupling. Let's come to the inductive first. So for inductive coupling, okay, so which is also known as the magnetic field coupling, okay, so a noise voltage is produced 
in series with the receptor conductor, whereas for capacitive coupling, a noise current is actually produced between the receptor conductor and also the ground. In short, over here, if we have this inductive coupling noise, okay, so what they actually produce is a noise voltage that is also in series with the receptor conductor. So basically, the thing actually linked by in series. Okay, so later on, I will have a so-called schematic to let you understand this better. As for capacity coupling, it actually creates a noise current that is actually parallel between the reception and also the ground. Again, let's take a look on the schematic later on. The difference can actually be used in the following test to distinguish between electric or magnetic coupling. Okay, firstly, we need to measure the noise voltage across the impedance at one end of the cable. While we decrease the impedance at the opposite end of the cable, okay, so if the measure voltage actually decreases, the pickup is electric. And if the measure voltage actually increases, then the pickup is magnetic. Okay, so next few slides will be able to let you understand this better. Okay, let's come to the inductive coupling first. Okay, so as I mentioned earlier on, for inductive coupling, they actually generate a voltage source. So you can see that this is actually a voltage source and they are actually connected in series with the reception conductor, as I mentioned earlier on. So therefore, from here, for inductive coupling, a noise voltage is actually produced in series with the reception conductor, as you can see from here. Okay, so how can we tell? Okay, let's say we do not know that they are actually in this kind of configuration. So we can only control on the two end. Okay, so basically these are the two end okay, on the reception here. So firstly, we measure the noise voltage across the impedance at one end of the cable. So this is a cable. On one end of the cable, we actually measure the noise voltage here as it illustrated over here. And then we actually can decrease the impedance or increase the impedance. For this case here, let's say we decrease the impedance, we make this R2 smaller at the opposite end of the cable. Okay, so if the measure noise voltage increase, okay, the pickup is magnetic. Okay, so what happened here is basically where we actually reduce the impedance over here. Okay, so therefore the voltage here is become smaller, then the voltage here will become larger. Do you agree? So therefore, you can see that your major noise voltage actually increase. So therefore, we know that this is actually magnetic. So basically, we know that these are all connected in series. Okay, so this is what you mean. We measure the noise voltage here first at one end of the cable. Then we are able to control the impedance here. So we connect an impedance, let's say over here. We can either increase or decrease the impedance. But we can actually firstly choose to decrease the impedance first. So basically, when we actually decrease this impedance, you know that the voltage fall over here will reduce because these things supply the voltage fall. So hence over here, you should be able to tell that the no, the voltage actually increase. So therefore, when we actually have a increase in terms of the measure noise voltage, we know that this is actually magnetic field coupling. Okay, so this is how we distinguish for the magnetic field coupling. Next, let's come to the capacitive coupling here. For capacitive coupling, okay, a noise current is actually produced between the reception conductor and ground. Okay, so basically this is a current source. Okay, remember for the magnetic field is a voltage source. For the elect capacitive is actually a current source. Okay, so this is a current source here. Again, how can we tell? Okay, again we need to measure the noise voltage across the impedance at one end of the cable. Then again we can reduce the impedance over here. Okay, so what happened here is basically when we actually reduce the impedance here, okay, the current will be more likely to flow this path. Less likely will flow this path. Do you agree? So more current will flow this path. Less current will flow this path. And when there is less current flow this path, this voltage will decrease. Do you agree? So therefore from here, if let's say we decrease the impedance at the opposite end of the cable, if the measure noise voltage decrease, okay, we know that the pickup is electric. Okay, so basically, in short, this is how we can tell whether the cable actually pick out is an electric coupling or a magnetic coupling. Basically, we can control the impedance and based on our measurement, whether is it increase or decrease, we will be able to tell whether is it electric coupling or capacitive coupling. Okay, so I hope you have a better idea. Okay, so before I continue, guys, again, if you have learned something from this video, can I urge you to help me 
by pressing the like button. For those who are new to this channel, and again, if you have learned and benefit from this video, please help to subscribe to this channel and turn on your notification bell. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. Let me quickly continue here. So we can also use appropriate sensor and also the instruments. Okay, so let's say the electric field sensor here. Okay, so we can use a high impedance probe or electric field meter to measure the electric field noise. Okay, so these sensors are very sensitive to noise voltage change and hence they will be able to detect electric field in the environment. Okay, remember, as I mentioned early on, electric field noise is basically a potential difference. So therefore, we can use a very high impedance probe or electric field meter to measure the electric field noise. And if you are able to pick up this, you know that you actually deal with electric field coupling. As for magnetic field sensor here, okay, it will be easier if we can use this loop antenna, which is a Hall effect sensor. Okay, so or a magnetic field meter to measure the magnetic field noise. These sensors are sensitive to current change and hence we are able to detect magnetic field. So over here, you use different instrument okay, to measure. Okay, so basically, if you have suspect that it's actually electric field, okay, so basically you can use a high impedance probe to measure. Okay, so if not, you can use a loop antenna to measure okay, to see whether the noise source is from magnetic coupling. Next, we can analyze the frequency spectrum. Okay, as for electric field noise, they actually happen at a higher frequency. Okay, as for magnetic field noise, they actually happen at a lower frequency. Okay, so electric field noise often appear at a higher frequency and they can be either very broad band or very narrow band. It actually depends on the noise source. As for magnetic field noise, they often appear at a lower frequency, okay, especially if it's related to power line frequency, 50 or 60 hertz, and also the harmonics, for example, two times 100, two times of 50, three times of 50, 150 hertz, etc. So basically, these are mainly occur on the magnetic field noise. As for electric field noise, they are actually occur at a higher frequency. Next, okay, we can observe the direction, the directivity. Okay, so electric field noise, they can be directive and is often influenced by the orientation of the sensor that is relative to the noise. As for magnetic field noise, again, they can be also very directive, okay, but the orientation of the sensor, okay, they will affect the measurement differently as compared to an electric field sensor. Okay, remember, we can use a loop antenna to manage to measure the magnetic field. So basically based on the orientation of the loop antenna, okay, you, if you can see the difference, okay, so most likely it will be a magnetic field noise. Okay, so therefore you can quickly tell whether is it a magnetic field or electric field. You can use a loop antenna. Basically they are very sensitive to the orientation of the measurement. So if you see that they actually affect, then most likely it will be a magnetic field noise. If you use a loop antenna on a electric field noise, Okay, so most likely at different orientation, nothing much will be changed. So basically, this will give you some indication whether your noise source is electric or magnetic coupling. Next, check for sources. Electric field source, okay, you basically look for a source like high voltage power line. Okay, for example, as I mentioned earlier on, for electric field, it's basically a voltage difference. Okay, so basically, if you have a high voltage then likely you are going to create a voltage difference. Okay, so basically for high voltage power line, fluorescent light or electronics device with high impedance output, then most likely you will generate electric field noise source here. As for magnetic field source, basically look for source like transformer, okay, motor or any device that need significant current flow. Okay, so basically the higher the current, the higher the magnetic fields. Uh, coupling. Okay, so therefore you, you need to take a closer look for those that draw excessive current. Okay, so all these will create magnetic field coupling. Next, on point number six, okay, again we can use different shielding technique to determine whether the noise source is from electric or magnetic field coupling here. Okay, let's come to the electric field shielding first. Okay, so we can use any conductive material. Okay, for example, copper or aluminium. Okay, so basically they are conductive material. They are actually very good in terms of shielding against electric field. Okay, so if the noise decreases significantly, it is likely 
e electronic electric field noise. As for magnetic field shielding, okay, so basically we can't use just any conductive material. We need to use a very high permeability material for some of this MU metal here to shield against magnetic field. Okay, so again, if the noise actually decreases significantly, it is most likely to be magnetic field noise. So basically from here, you can use shielding okay, and based on the outcome, you will be able to know whether is it electric field or a magnetic field noise source here. Next, on the seven, okay, basically we can conduct the different measurement, okay. So electric field, okay, for example, we can measure the noise with and without a ground shield. Okay, so a significant reduction actually indicate that it is actually an electric field noise. As for magnetic field, okay, again, we can measure the noise with and without a magnetic shield. Okay, so again, any significant reduction they actually can indicate that it's actually a magnetic field noise. Coming to the eight, okay, uh, which is consult the environment, okay, which is more or less I have discussed earlier on. Okay, for electric field, more likely in environment that with high voltage equipment or static electricity. Okay, remember, always remember this electric field is a potential different or a voltage different. So therefore, if you have some source that can have high voltage then typically you can create a voltage different and hence you are actually more vulnerable to electric field noise. As for magnetic field, most likely in environment that you have this heavy machinery transformer that basically carry a large current. As I illustrated earlier on, the larger the current, the more magnetic field you actually generate and the more magnetic coupling can actually occur. Last one, okay, before we end this discussion is to use some simulation tools okay so basically in short if you can do some form of simulation for the e field and the magnetic field you will be able to model for example the electric field and hence we are able to predict the noise source again based on the same simulation tools we can do some form of modeling on the magnetic field and therefore again we can also predict the level of the noise source with this i'd like to end my discussion please help to like and subscribe. Once again, thank you so much for strong support. I hope to see you guys soon. Bye for now. Thank you so much.